Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now May 2nd of 2020 and ever since the release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, a lot of fans around the world have been very intrigued about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney and Lucasfilm and exactly how both Bob Chapek and Bob Iger are really going to handle things for the next decade. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, currently as we speak, we do know that Disney has over 10 years worth of Star Wars projects in the early development phase. That, of course, is for primarily Disney+. Plus. Let that sink in for a second. That's over 10 years worth of Star Wars projects for live action TV shows and animated TV shows combined. And that's separate from the new Star Wars trilogy and any other movies planned in the early development phase. So they really do have a lot of ambition, whether or not they're really doing this out of a phase of desperation or damage control, or if they're just trying to really genuinely trying to make Star Wars the best that it can be. Obviously, Disney, of course, is a company. They want to make money, obviously. It makes sense. But at the same exact time, you have to put out a good product. And that's exactly what they're trying to do now moving forward. Uh, you know, aside from Kathleen Kennedy's one project that she, that she actually has creative control over, which is the Leslie Headland Star Wars project for Disney+. Plus. Now, on top of all of this, a lot of fans have been very curious, very much, you know, wondering about what could have been before the reshoots and the rewrites of The Rise of Skywalker. We do know that it was a very shaky production. It had a lot of issues because of Kathleen Kennedy interfering and having creative differences with J.J. Abrams, George Lucas, and of course, Chris Terrio, and even the actors and actresses on set. Now, with that being said, now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are finished with The Rise of Skywalker, they are focused on their new Star Wars trilogy of films, as well as their new Star Wars universe. Now, currently both Bob Iger and Bob Chapek are hard at work on developing multiple plans in order to create a better future for the Star Wars brand, and to reunite the fans around the world. Now, many fans have been very curious about what could have been before the major reshoots and rewrites of the film by Kathleen Kennedy that she initiated and forced J.J. Abrams to do. One of the major segments cut from the film involved the third act of the movie on the world of Exegol, where originally the Force Ghost of Anakin Skywalker, portrayed by Hayden Christensen, was going to appear to help a wounded and unconscious Rey by giving her the power of the Netherworld of the Force, where he would place his hands on Rey's back, giving her the power of the wills and the Netherworld. Now, Anakin Skywalker's design as a Force Ghost was described to have a different appearance, with a aged design with shorter hair and long Jedi robes where his force ghost would have white orbs floating around him. The scene originally progressed to a moment in which Anakin would then take a step back as Palpatine begins to stop his force storm technique, where Rey begins to stand on her two feet, gaining power. Where this is where Palpatine and Anakin's force ghost would meet again for a brief period in time, in which they lock eyes and Anakin Skywalker gives Palpatine a smirk before other force ghosts appear behind Rey and Anakin, placing their hands on her shoulder. The Force Ghosts, including Luke, Yoda, Kenobi, and even Leia, all grouped together on the left and right portion of Anakin, where they would all be behind Rey. Palpatine, portrayed by Ian McDermott, originally had one line of dialogue when looking at the Force Ghost, where he would then say the simple word, Skywalkers, almost as if he was in fear or felt challenged by their support to Rey. Now, this would then progress to both Ben and Rey engaging in a lightsaber duel against Palpatine, where Palpatine would eventually be defeated by Ben Solo, where Palpatine's spirit escapes his body and gets dragged into the netherworld of the Force by the Force ghosts of the past that many fans know and love, including never-before-seen ancient Jedi Force ghosts dragging the spirit of Palpatine into the light side realm that would ultimately destroy him. Now, the scene was partially shot and was considered to be the original fight sequence that George and JJ put together before Kathleen Kennedy initiated reshoots. So, the thing about The Rise of Skywalker, this once again tells us that it really could have been so much more when it comes to the Force lore, just the mythology of the Jedi, and everything related to the dark side. I don't know about you, but as a Star Wars fan, I myself am more engaged into the mythology as opposed to the war-centric stuff, like the ships and the battles and stuff around those lines. I'm more into the mythology. I'm talking about like Jedi, Sith, light, dark, uh, you know, that whole entire segment. Keep in mind that I do love the war side of Star Wars. I do, like with Rogue One, a Star Wars story. But the thing that really catches my interest the most all has to do with the mythology. And I think that's exactly why 
a lot of fans love the prequels and a lot of fans really love the originals is because it really does dive into that a lot. So when we look at this scenario where you have Anakin Skywalker's Force Ghost and Palpatine meeting once again, not necessarily fighting, but meeting once again briefly, locking eyes, where Anakin gives him a bit of a smirk, that I think would have really given a lot of leverage for the movie. I think it, that in on itself would have really given the movie multiple viewings or repeat viewings, if you will. I myself, I would say that I would have seen that movie easily five times more than I did if, of course, they kept that scene in the movie before Kathleen Kennedy intervened and forced J.J. Abrams to cut all of it. So, like I've said before in the past, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.